For all the people out there watching this, if you are a plumber, electrician, HVAC business owner who feels stuck right now, I felt that way too. My name is Mike Agliero. Me and my business partner, Rob, started out as electricians. It was just the two of us doing jobs from our beat up van. We were overwhelmed and extremely frustrated. We wanted to grow our business, but wondered how could we learn from the greatest minds in business? Why would they ever take the time to meet up with just two burnt out electricians from New Jersey? We promised that if we ever became successful, we would be the conduit, the conduit to bring great business minds to our industry. Well, you've probably heard our story of how we grew our service business into a $32 million a year service empire. And it was acquired by a private equity company. Then we went on to start CEO Warrior so we could help change the lives of other service business owners. That's why I'm so excited to bring to you, to our industry, this interview with two of my friends and mentors, Jay Abraham and Brian Kurtz. These are two of the greatest business legends today. Collectively, they've generated more than $9 billion. They build businesses and consult with famous business owners like Tony Robbins, Damon John, and David Asprey. Heck, they have to spend $10,000, even $25,000 or more just to get an hour of their time. They speak on some of the greatest stages in the world with some of the best known business leaders. They're busy and have very high fees for the consulting they do, and they say because they're so busy. And yet, I am humbled by the fact that they take the time to come to CEO Warriors events and serve our clients at the highest level. I had the privilege of sitting down with them and asking them about what drives them to take time out of their busy schedules to speak with service business owners. You'll get a sneak peek into what we do at CEO Warrior and you'll hear the perspectives of these two legends who share the CEO Warrior mission of helping service business owners around the globe. Make sure you watch all the way through for strategies and ideas that can help you. I think you'll be very inspired and maybe even shocked by what you see. Boom. Hey everybody, so welcome here to this video and I am here with a very good friend, Brian Kurtz and Jay Abraham. And we wanted to just start having a conversation, guys, about, you know, here you are at one of my events. And, you know, I talk to my wife, my partner all the time, and I'm like, why do you guys, why do you even come here? Why would you even come and speak to a bunch of contractors or for CEO Warrior? Well, it was funny. We were just having this conversation about, you know, going to places to be, to be a paid speaker mm. or to go somewhere to be for strategic, purposes. And frankly, I'm not here for either of those things, which is kind of interesting. And I started thinking about like, why, what I do, it. you know, yes, we're friends and, you know, we do a lot of stuff together and we're always coaching each other and all of that. But it's bigger than that because mm -hmm. I think I, I, it, you always have a group of, of people in your crowd, um, service providers at all different levels, small companies to much larger companies. And they're just so eager to learn. They're so eager to um, be sort of mentored by you mm. and to be able to back you up on that. It feels, to be on a stage with people who want to learn marketing, they are hungry, they understand that, that their service business is not just something to do for a living. They really care about yeah. making it so much bigger. And to have that opportunity to be in front of those kinds of people is very exhilarating for me. Like I, I get a lot of. Um, Sorry about that. I, that's okay. I get a lot of personal juice out of um, being in front of your tribe, or we, and at, at every level. And you know, does it can it lead to something down the road? Maybe, but yeah. I don't even look at it that way. And it's one of the few places I go on a regular basis that is not really. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't make me money directly, nor does it directly uh, cause some strategic partnership for my business as it stands now, but I just really want to be in front of people who are that mm. eager to, to just up their game and um, 
and I know that they're going to use the information I give them to do some really good stuff and create yeah. more impact in the world. So that feels really good. And I always thought it was just for the food that you came from. Yeah, no, the sandwich, you know, the sandwich, sandwich that, that Italian sandwich was pretty good, but you know, I don't think I would come just for that. Yeah. And what about you, Jay? I mean, there's people all over the world. You've coached thousands of industries. You're on some of the greatest stages on the planet today and for many years, but then you decide you're going to come mm. here and help a plumber or an HVAC guy with information. Well, there's there's a reason. There's method to my madness, and it's it's uh, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty significant. I, I've in the last couple of decades of my life gotten very focused on people who were making massive difference in either industries or sectors. And when you and I first met, you may or may not uh, remember you made a donation to something noble, and I was very impressed with that. And we did a, a consultation, and you asked monumentally great questions from a very intelligent point of view that I thought was very unique to my vision of your industry. And I was very, very piqued. And then as I got to know you and Rob and what you were doing and why you were doing it and how you were doing it and what you were focused on producing, which were uh, preeminent, high performing, high contributing, uh, meaningfully significant players in the industry, starting with HVAC and then you evolved to all kinds of services. I was very impressed because you weren't just trying to teach people how to manipulate mm -hmm. business, but how to create meaningful contribution-based businesses that provided the uh, epitome of value, benefit, and outcome for the, you know, the clients, and I started looking at what you'd done for yourselves, the business you'd built from scratch, the values you've created, your belief in leadership, your, uh, your ability to help a hardworking, but let's say uh, strategically impaired mm -hmm. owner mm -hmm. of a service yeah. business get clarity, get purpose, get passion, raise profoundly and almost unlimited their sense of what was possible, not just for them, but from them for all the other people they could grow, their team, the market, you know, their, their asset. I got very excited for you because there are very few people that I have seen that are really trying to make a difference first as opposed to making money first. You've got a model that I think is quite profound, and it's not really for everyone. It's for people who sense inherently that their service business, HVAC or whatever, has the capacity of making a huge expanded impact in their market, has a capacity to be you know, the preeminent leader, has a capacity to have some of the greatest team members, but they don't always know how to fulfill, how to how to realize or how to how to achieve that goal. And I think you have systems, processes, strategies, procedures, and a methodology that helps good people become great and people who have the inherent, not just desire, but commitment and capacity to be great value creators to learn how to make that uh, a, a reality in their market. And I, um, I celebrate that. I, uh, relate to it. I am committed in my personal life and my business to do everything and anything to help that because I think that's what makes our society better. That's what makes entrepreneurship better. I think you're one of the good guys. Oh, thank yeah. you. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just agree with everything Jay just said because he said it way better than I could have. And also, I, I mean, I get to come here and hang out with Jay, who's my <laughs> yeah. mentor as well. But I think another thing too is that the world is so. And Jay made me just think of this: that the world is just um, it, it's all about everything. Is, everything feels commoditized so much, and certainly, you know, looking for um, you know a heating, ventilating, air conditioning, or a plumber or electrician, it, yeah. it's it's like it's like who's the who's A in the phone book? You know, let's call our company A A A A A A so we can be the yeah. first listed yeah. in the yellow pages. I'm, I'm dating myself a little bit, but when I see somebody like you doing all the things that Jay's talking about to turn this kind of commoditized world into a specialty, I realize that's really one of my missions. Like, so everybody that I coach in the marketing world are all, I, I just, anybody who, if their business smells like commodity, 
I work so hard with them to figure out what's their differentiator, what's their unique selling proposition, yeah. what they're going to do. And that's your mission in a world of a lot of mediocrity, generally, not, not your fault, just is, like any service type of business. And yeah. so that you're like putting it on another level, like I think it makes us, I think it makes us better marketers, I think it makes, you know, I learn a lot when I come here. Yeah, and but Brian, so, what about in the world? I mean, imagine you're, you're a guy, you're a plumber, you're an electrician, you're in a truck, you're grinding it out, you're, you're starting early, you're probably getting home late, you probably frustrated your wife, you're missing your children, and, but then the market's confusion, like, where do I go? How do I know I'm making the right decision? Who should I learn from? You hear everybody talking about uh, Think and Grow Rich. Well, yeah, it's a great book, but I mean, so many people read it and their life didn't change. So what would you say to a guy that's maybe in a truck or something like that? Like, does he, and he maybe even thinks he doesn't even deserve something better than his life right now. Yeah, I mean, it's very much that whole thing about, you know, you don't have to go it alone. And so I think that, you know, I find when I'm trying to describe the whole idea of being in a, a, a mastermind group or a, or a coaching group or a group yeah. where I'm learning from other people who do what I do for a living, if you, t if you talk to lawyers, accountants, dentists, most people have no idea what you're talking about. It's like, right. there's a business for that? Like, you can do that and you don't have to sit alone and try to figure it out yourself? So mm -hmm. the, if, if, if I can do anything to say, okay, here I am, been in marketing for 40 years, if I can penetrate, not just, if I can find other people like you doing for other industries that can teach them not that they're not alone, that it's been invented before. You know, I always yeah. talk about, um, I, I write, you don't have to be the inventor, but you do need to be the innovator. And, but the innovator can be stuff that you're, I mean, we're, Jay and I are big proponents of looking at old marketing yeah. and, 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 and swipe, they call them swipe files. I mean, the whole world's a swipe file. When you think about it, like anybody who's ever had an HVAC business ever, if it ever could be combined mm -hmm. into a package, CEO Warrior does that, and they might not even know about it. So we got to get more right. people to know about that. So I think that there's this, this, um, mentality that you you don't have to go it alone there are you you can actually steal smart from what's been done for, before yeah. and apply it to your business and unfortunately i don't think a lot of people who are you know out there in in, in the lone truck know what to do and then the other other little yeah. piece which i mentioned on stage today was that you know those who did it have an obligation to teach it yeah. i learned that from him you know, when, when Jay told me, hey, Brian, you've been doing this for 40 years, you know, it's your moral responsibility to yeah. teach everything you've learned. You had a su hugely successful uh, HVAC business with other businesses in there. Once you sold it, you were just getting started. It was like, yeah. you know, you, I think, feel this obligation. So that, but get, how do we get you know, companies to know about. And of course, that's your challenge on the marketing side. And then anything I can do to talk to you, I don't deal with a lot of HVAC businesses yeah. outside of here, but I, I would always talk about you as sort of the coach mm. for service businesses. And it's a model to emulate. Yeah, and it's interesting that you said that because, you know, when you look at it, you know, when the market hears it and I say, oh, we did, you know, 200 million in 10 years, they're like, oh, wow, it's, it seems so far for them. But what they should take away from that is not that I did 200 million. You know, I'm not impressed. I'm not sure who is or not. But the fact is that you're I've impressed. already, you're impressed. Thank you. I'm impressed Thank too, but, but, but that isn't the reason. I, I know where you're going to go with this. We made all the mistakes. Right. And that my they dad, don't have to. <laughs> right. And my dad used to say, look, here's the stove. There's two ways for you to know that it's dangerous. You can trust me or you could touch the stove. And I was smart enough to say, I don't need this. It looks hot to me. I don't need to burn myself to prove it. But, you know, so I think as you're, as you're sharing that there, we made the mistakes. Plus, I've had a ton of coaches. You guys are coaches. I've already had what's really good quality coaches that helped me. One, answering one question moves the needle so fast. Right. But when you're running alone, and I don't know about you guys, and I'm going to go right to Jay, I hear people all the time, well, I'm thinking about getting a partner so I could kick ideas off of. And I said, do you realize how silly this could be? 
So you're already confused. You're hoping that if another confused person will create enlightenment or awareness or wait, like it doesn't work that way. And you got to give up 50% of the yes. business, right? You create greater confusion. Right. Jay, what are you thinking? Well, I made some notes. Uh, and, and I think it's really important that, that anyone who is struggling, who is stuck, and there's a lot of ways you can be stuck in, uh, in a smaller business, particularly a service business, because you're right. <clears throat> Pardon me. Your nose is to the grindstone. You're yeah. doing it. You're trying to manage. You're trying to do a lot of things. It, the first thing is to have someone who really understands what I'll call the meaning of business life explain it. Mm, yeah. Because when it's when the dots get connected, you know, the the intimidation, the the frustration, the overwhelm gets replaced with clarity, focus, certainty, and uh, and realization that it is possible. That you know, maybe they can't do twenty million dollars a year, but there's no reason they couldn't do forty if they were that ambitious. Because yeah. it's not, you know, it's it's not a secret. There's a process, and you've got it down to a very predictable process, a very qualitative system. You've got you've you've taken every mistake you've made, but also I know that you and Rob, your partner, have invested millions of dollars learning, and. People don't have to now. I think every human yeah. being needs an advocate, a champion, a sword, a shield that protects them, and somebody who has enough confidence and faith in them because they know not what's possible, but what is certain if someone will just you know, follow the path. It's very much like a parent knowing that if the, the little baby will work at it, they'll learn to talk, they'll learn to eat, they'll yeah. learn to speak, I mean, they'll learn to go to the bathroom. You, you've been there, done that, and you've done it for enough companies who have doubled, redoubled, redoubled, not just sales, but sustainability, uh, 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 profitability, yeah. uh, let's call it joyability if that exists. And I made a couple of notes because I think there are a lot of people that don't realize that you can go from mediocrity to magnificence. And I don't think mediocrity mm -hmm. means that they are mediocre as a human being, that they have a mediocre work ethic, that they have a mediocre sense of the service they want to provide. They have a mediocre understanding of how to achieve it. And if you can take that to a magnificent clarity, a magnificent clear and direct path, uh, a shortcut, a way to go not just faster, mm -hmm. but higher, safer, with more predictability. And you can take something that, and I wrote something down, a lot of these people I suspect have a limited lifestyle business. And I think you're trying to yeah. turn them into a lavish, enduring business, yeah, a scalable business, a business that has uh, predictability, sustainability, and asset value, so they're building something of true net worth. I think you, you, the concept of transformation is, we talked about this, Brian and I, there's so many words that have so little meaning anymore. Yeah, that's one of them. But if you can really help somebody who's, who sees their destiny as limited, and you can liberate them for their own betterment and for the ability they have to make a big difference with so many more people whose lives they can enrich by being uh, a better service provider by so many people whose lives they can enrich by being a greater employer, leader, yeah. opportunity developer. Y you change at a level of comprehension that most people don't even fathom the the uh, the reality of a lot of people's lives. And I think there's some, I've, I've met here some really fine people, very good values, very hard work, yeah. very, very uh, eager to grasp yeah. And apply and and in many yeah, you fields, don't get that in audiences no. that are you know many, yeah. yeah many fields you get people that just want to hear, but the people that come here already have got a prejudice towards enormous action it, it ex almost a fanaticism about execution because you can't fake it right. when you're when you're doing this kind of work incredible work ethic because of the hours and the discipline yeah all they have to do is be shown how to channel it into a much higher, better, faster, and, and uh, more meaningful process, system, template, and the sky's the limit. And I, 
I, I've been on a path all my whole life to help people realize the fullest and and the most uh, enriching, not just financially, but but emotionally, psychically, yeah. uh, enriching uh, uh, realization of what they're doing for the rest of their life. And I think that work and business doesn't have to be living hell, doesn't have to be yeah. hopeless. It can be glorious, and I think you help make it really possible. And the people I've met and the people we're gonna be interviewing uh, a little later, I mean, it's funny, because we were talking about asking them how long they've been in your group, but that's the wrong question, is how many millions of dollars have yeah. they grown from being in the group? 10 yeah. million, 20 million, uh, you know, 15 million, uh, 15 more offices, uh, 10,000 more clients. That's really the denominator yeah. that I think you stand for. So yeah. I, I also think that this, the, the, um, there just aren't a lot of CEO warrior type companies out there mm. because, you know, in your case, I mean, you could have packed it in. I mean, you know, you sold your company. I mean, yeah. you could be on the beach or, you know, you could yeah. be retired. And you went the other way and said, you know what? Again, it, it, it is a, yeah. for me, it's a Jay Abraham premise that I live my life by now too, that again, the, the almost the moral responsibility that, man, I've got all, I, Mike, have all this, and CEO Warrior has all this accumulated knowledge. What a waste if we don't give it away yeah. to this generation of companies that might think that it's a hopeless situation or might think that they can't do what I did. As Jay said, whether they end up being, you know, you know, 200 million over 10 years or whatever it might be, or mm. it doesn't matter. The number, you're right, the number doesn't matter, but that they actually have a guide that's willing to yeah. do that for them, you know, kudos to you for doing that. Yeah, I and, mean, I, and I think it's important that everybody should be able to get an enormous life return on their investment in whatever their, their <laughs> career is, yeah. but they don't know how. It's not their fault, no shame in struggling, no shame in uh, not knowing how to grow, no shame in not knowing how to uh, reach more of a market, no shame in not knowing how to uh, hire and retain and grow people because it's not what you're really trained to do when you get into the service business. But when there's someone here who is committed and has got a very, very, very extensively well-documented history of doing that for them, there is shame yeah. in allowing yeah. yourself to remain frustrated or mm -hmm. stuck or miserable or stressed because yeah. there are alternatives. I think you're a wonderful, refreshing, and very unique and admirable alternative. Thank you. What do you, Brian, what do you see? I mean, you've been here, you spoke at many events before, and what would you say one of the biggest things that you know, you speak that you notice changes for them. Because I mean, it's like, how do you, I remember when I was in a truck and then there was a, a seminar or something I wanted to go do. I said, how do I, how do I do this? How do I take a day off? How do I take a week off? But then when you see what happens with people in a room and you've been, both of you guys have been to a lot of different types of events and experiences, me too. Uh, some of them very well done. And some of them I said that was a great, that was like a rock concert. It was just a great time, yeah. but I didn't do anything on Monday. So what are some of the things that you've noticed that maybe could give somebody that's watching this, what do, what do I want them to get? I want them to get hope. And the second thing on top of hope, they deserve it. Yeah, I mean, they're working so hard and they're working hard but not smart. Yeah. Because, and plus, you know, we've talked about this before that displacing yourself out of your environment out of your truck, out of your office, out of yeah. whatever, and getting into a room of, of like-minded people with a mindset of growth and things that you want to do for your business. What I see when I look out at your audiences is a, they're finally sort of free to think more boldly about their business mm -hmm. and they're not, you know, they're not like head down, you know, figuring out how to make payroll. They're figuring out yeah. how this can be a much bigger life. Mm -hmm. And then specifically, you know, I mean, I come and talk about marketing a lot. And to look at light bulbs go off, because yeah. I see it based on the questions they ask me, based on the follow-ups after the event, and also just based on their faces when I'm talking to them. I'm not trying to teach them like advanced marketing concepts. 
What I really want them to understand is that you know, new business just doesn't come out of the air. Yeah. And so I always say marketing isn't everything, it's the only thing. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you have to be, you know, sell your soul and you don't have to... You're connecting the dots for them, right? Yes, and, 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 yeah. and really getting them to understand that, you know, you can complain all you want about not having enough customers right. and not having enough business, but you also need to understand that, you know, marketing's not evil, selling's not evil. Yeah. But then again, if you do it in a way that's just about cash events, and that seems to be the light yeah. bulb that goes off in the... And you, and you teach a lot of marketing at this event yourself because you're a great marketer. And I think that that is a big like switch on for yeah. so many of the people here because they already they start saying, well, wait a minute, it's not this magic bullet that I've got to go fishing for clients all day and hook them in yeah. and, and grab their cash. They start thinking about a long-term business. And that to me has been the most satisfying because that's the way I teach marketing. Yeah, and long-term business, right? Long-term business growth and, yeah. and playing a long game and not playing a cash event game, like, you know, yeah. a revenue event game. And, and that, that probably, I, I see it in your audience, and it's because you, you're teaching them the mindset first right. to think about their business not as a commodity, that it's a long-term play, even if we're in a business that's considered somewhat commoditized. And then I'm going to teach them these skills mm -hmm. that I learned in, in the business that I, Mike, grew. Yeah. And, it, and, and it's all those aspects. It's yeah. how to hire better and it's how to, you know, how to, how to do your marketing so that it's not intimidating. Yeah. And, how you can go, and then you bring in vendors. Like, I mean, look at that. I mean, if, if I could tell the guy sitting in the truck that if they come to a CEO Warrior event, mm -hmm. they're not only going to get taught by this amazing coach who's been through it already and, and, and series of coaches, but he also has vetted the best vendors no more guessing no right. more guessing you vetted yeah. them they can then at least with some confidence outsource because you got out i mean if you do it all yourself you're not going right. to grow either so you teach them the the beauty of outsourcing and then hand them vendors that you feel and, and if those vendors don't come through for the ceo warrior members yeah. they're not going to be they won't be here they won't be here much yeah. longer and that and it's confusing right like uh who do i use for direct mail or pay-per-click or website or buy parts from nobody nobody you're taking a chance i gotta try i'm trusting you and, I, and so right. i knowing if i could know that i could have somebody that i could trust at your level yeah. who's seen all the all the imposters and all the charlatans yeah. but all the people that come through for my business yeah they're you know that's a, that's a very fortunate thing but again it's it's hard to know when you are i guess i i have never been in the truck and you i've never know, i don't know don't how know. they feel and I'm right? sure it's hard for them to, yeah. to probably suspend themselves and say, I, should I invest in myself? Yeah. So you made a comment today about how many people have spent, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on their kids' education with no guarantee of a return. Yeah. Meanwhile, if you spend that money on your own tuition and your own education. You can pay for the education. You can pay for the, you can pay for the wasted college education. Yeah, right? for your kid to for have a kid. party. Right. Jay, what are, you, what are you thinking about this? Uh, you, you stimulated a lot of thoughts, and I thought what Brian just <clears throat> shared was quite profound. I was thinking about when I first started trying to uh, make a big difference in entrepreneurs' minds of what was possible and what their, uh, not, not just the possibility, but the purpose and, and get them impassioned about it. But I, I used to run ads that would say, why does one uh, company in a field make X or one person? when another one makes 10x or 20x or 100x and we would go back to the, to another question you don't have more than you all have the same 7 days 24 yeah, hours same time some have a little more capital but you know you all have the same market to penetrate you know what is it that 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 defines somebody who's successful growth builds a business and somebody who struggles and really never really gets it all together well if you look at work ethic, I would say that most of them have that. Yeah. If you look at pride of uh, work, they probably have that. If you look at understanding the, you know, the system, the method, the strategy, the process that will produce multiples upon multiples of results, very few of them they have, don't have that. The lead, they don't have those levers, right? Yeah, yeah. they don't yeah. know how to do it. Right. And I think it's important that they, a lot of people in fields I believe like 
like services feel like they're alone. There's no one there yeah. to turn to. And I think the most important thing is they're not alone. You have attracted and you have, uh, you have combined and you have created an environment of, of many, many like-minded people with similar long-term goals, but starting out with different levels of, of, uh, of gaps they need filled. And yeah. you very systematically can fill the gaps on a very, very, I'll use the word pragmatic, but a very progressive basis. So it's not intimidating. It's not overwhelming. It's not something that doesn't work. You give them a me mechanism so they can go out and they can apply it and they see a result yeah. and they have successes so they don't get uh, depressed or intimidated. And the successes, if they do it right, far and away, Oh, outweigh the cost and they start yeah. being cash flow more positive and more positive yeah. and you show them how to reinvest and build a business not just a one truck or two truck service and I think that's very important but I wrote down this concept of creative collaboration that's probably one of the most undervalued and and um, and uh, an enormously I guess I would use the right word. It's one of the greatest propellant, propellants yeah. in the world towards achievement, satisfaction, fulfillment, uh, uh, understanding, because you've got all these different people coming together to share different viewpoints, to yeah. share different skill sets, to share different lessons that you can avoid. And I don't think anyone who's not experienced that, I don't, I don't think anyone, I'm not saying it correctly, can fathom the power and the uh, and the and just the enormous the enormous capacity it has to catapult their achievements not not because of anything other than just its combined you know concentrated you know world understanding of all that's possible for them and then they can yeah. divide it conquer sift through it it's very cool and then I said basically I think you do something more than coaching. I like coaching, but I have a, a, a nuance and a, and a maybe it's a semantic uh, issue with it. I think many coaches say, Brian, Mike, what is it you want to do? And you'll say, well, I got one truck and uh, I'm making 75 grand. I want to have three and make 100. And they say, okay, let's figure a place yeah. and a way to do it. But I think a, a mentor is someone, I think you're more in this kind of a, uh, is, who knows that for the same time, the same effort, same opportunity cost, I'm not gonna let you limit yourself to three trucks and a hundred yeah. grand because you can right. have 23 trucks and be making a hundred grand a month right. and be doing a greater job and making a difference and employing more people and creating more security and more joy. And I'm not gonna let you to not deny that self for yourself if yeah. I believe that's going to fulfill and 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 complete you more, and I think that's important, and I also think there's a concept that you represent uniquely in this field. I call it a masterful thinking partner, mm. somebody who can think through with you not just the external mechanics or or elements of business building, but the internal ones that mean you know the issues you have to deal with, personnel issues. Uh, balance of life issues, time management yeah. issues, self uh, self esteem issues, am I worthy type issues, and mm. I think all those left to their own devices are what really limit, constrain, yeah. impede, and and keep people stuck. And I think you're very good at blowing those away, and and you know the sky all of a sudden is clear and the clouds are gone and the you know, and uh, the rain is 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 gone, and the sun is shining. It's not quite that easy, but you give them you give them a level of expansion that they could never really, I think, envision on their own. And I think that comes from uh, all of us. What we do is, you know, I always use martial arts. Martial arts, the instructor, they call him sensei. Which I say, okay, but do you know what sensei is? It just means one who went before. Mm. So we already, we made the mistakes, we learned the decisions, we learned how to punch right, kick right, and now you could apply that to your business. Brian, I'd like to end with one thing. So, you know, I think back to this hope or this, um, I don't know if it's hope, willingness, 
uh, gratefulness, but you have somebody that's out there today. It could be small, it could be a one truck, or it could be somebody with 40 trucks that's stuck. And, but I think everybody wants a finish line, right? And they want a timeline for their finish line. Maybe your finish line is 85 years old, or maybe you want it like, man, by the time I'm 65. And then there's the immediate finish line. That's like, hey, I just wanna get home early, and I'd love nothing more than to hug my wife without her being mad or eat dinner with my children. So talk a little bit about this somebody. If you were to give them insight to the world, like, look, I don't know what position you're in, but maybe just consider thinking like this or doing something like this. You know, it, it's, uh, it's always that, I, I, you, normally the stumbling block is going to be, I don't have the time, you know, I can't travel, yeah. I... And I, I think that, so the, 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 my, the thing you have to get, that first stumbling block, is that what do I, what, what happens if I don't do something oh, different? That's scary. So, you know, it's like the whole idea is like my, my I, keep, I, I, I keep banging my head against the wall and my head hurts. So, you know, stop <laughs> yeah. banging your head against the wall. Right. So I, I think that that's probably step one from a mindset standpoint. Now, you know, whether it's, I don't know of anybody else who's even, you know, doing what you're doing for your industry. I'm sure there are competitors, but it doesn't matter yeah. because this is the one that is going to change their life, in my opinion, because I just know that it's, it's a done, it's, it's already been, you know, you've got all these success stories, you've got, um, you've got so much track record there. So I guess, you know, it's a very hard thing. I mean, even for like, you know, I think like Jay and I and you too, we're a little spoiled in that we already have bought into, I always say, it's not drinking the Kool-Aid, right. believe me. It's like bought into the fact that, you know, being, being in a big room with really smart people and, you know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Right. And we all believe that all the time, even though we're all pretty smart guys. Um, but I think that to understand that to be in a room, I, I love that analogy you said, you know, I'm going to go get a partner and now we can be confused together. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. if that one partner was you, a little different story, but yeah. it's still not good enough. It's still yeah. not good enough because look at the people you bring in to speak, not just us, but other people. Look at the people on your team that do coaching. Look at the, 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 the vetted partners, outside partners that you bring, what you call vendors, but I think they're yeah. way bigger than that. Oh, yeah. These are like your, so where you, where, you know, you, you, you have to suspend yourself to say that um, I got to get past that first big speed bump called, I don't have time for that because then I can't do the business. Well, right. you have to look at it the other way. And if you don't invest, you'll keep doing basically the same thing. Now, you might have an okay life, but I think you're right about what do you really want? Like what, I always talk about what are your non-negotiables? Like yeah. what are the things you won't do? Most people rarely write those down. Yeah. But even more so, like what is your finish line? Or what is your like, you know, what are your goals? What do you really want? I mean, if you could make a list. I mean, I don't think people really spend the time. I don't spend enough time doing it as often as I should. Yeah. You know, write down all the things that would be the ideal thing. All the things that I refuse to do. And then every day look at that list and say, how many of those things that I refuse to do am I actually doing? Which is crazy. Yeah. And then certainly in the list of things that you want, you're probably not going to get them without a little help. So what kind of help yeah. do you want? Do you want just to you know, get, get people to invest in your business with money? I mean, money doesn't do it. You need, yeah. you, need that, you need that camaraderie. You need that support. And so that's what I would probably say. But... It's a hard argument to make for somebody who's never experienced the wisdom of a, yeah. of a really powerful room of people in the same boat you are. Yeah, it's interesting. I think a lot of people, they, you hear them, they love to repeat phrases like insanity. Like insanity, doing the same thing. Yeah, over yeah, yeah. Well, I would say, forget about what you think you know the definition. The whole thing I would want you to think about is stop insanity for yourself. How long are you willing to tolerate your current situation. Right. And and how long are you willing to tolerate? And and this is hurtful. So anybody watching this, this, this is the most painful thing for me. How long was I willing to tolerate what I was doing to my family? Not I wasn't hurt my family, but really I was. I was missing some of the time that I could never get back. And there's consequences to, you know, waking up one day and now you're 30, 40, 50, and now your kids are grown up and you said, man, I don't even remember. I don't remember the ball game or I don't even, you mean there was something at your school I didn't make it to? 
And that's the consequence that some of us, you just don't want to live with that. Yeah. You know, I'm going to do something which is a little more, not esoteric, but I'm going to, I'm going to analogize you in a different way and try to shock and provoke uh, a, a realization into people watching. And I hope this works. If not, <laughs> then you can edit if it. If not, out. we'll never know because we're not that's really right. talking to them directly. That's so. right. So <laughs> I'm going to advocate that what you are is their ultimate investment advisor. And mm -hmm. anybody should know what an investment advisor is, uh, you know, a capable, competent, uh, fiduciary, uh, uh, compliant one looks out after the very best interest of their client, the investor, for whatever that investor is most uh, important, strategic, whatever it is, long, short, wealth, security, retirement. I advocate and submit that all these service people that you are uh, you are offering to guide are investing every minute of every hour of every uh, day of their lives in different things and accepting a substandard outcome. They're investing time in, uh, in areas that may not be as lucrative. They're investing yeah. time in uh, doing things they shouldn't be doing because they could make a lot more for themselves by concentrating on where they're stronger. They're yeah. investing time doing it themselves when they should have assistance, they're making time, they're investing in, mid, in, in less quality people because they don't know how to hire or lead or motivate or grow. They're investing poorly in not knowing how to get the market to recognize them. They're investing, uh, doing it all themselves in a lifestyle when the same amount of time could be producing uh, a significant and valued business. And I think you're also a great asset manager because assets are our time, our effort, our relationships, our capital. It's funny, people don't realize if they uh, buy equipment, if they buy or lease a truck, that is an investment. And theoretically, an investment is supposed to provide a yield. Right. But I don't think most service people even think that way, no, but I no. think you're an investment advisor, you're an asset advisor. Now, when I get to the next part, is very interesting. You're a risk manager because I don't mm. believe that people, if they look at the rest of their life in terms of the risk they're taking for an outcome that is so uncertain the way they're doing it and so uh, improbable to come up with the result they want mm. that a risk manager says, hey, y you don't want that much risk. Don't you want success? Don't you want certainty? Don't you want you know, predictable, secure, recurring. Don't you want yeah. a business that works harder for you? Don't you want, I mean, and they don't stop and think. They're doing terrible risk yeah. management. And the risk of doing nothing at all. It's yeah, most I, I, lo right I love there. the way Jay did that in terms of like looking at it, because it's so much bigger than obviously money, and, and, but it's but it's like you, that you use terminology. Well, I think for, that's how I see yeah. it. And the last is wealth management and wealth just mm -hmm. for everyone's uh, not just uh, money. It's not denominated <laughs> money. Right. Wealth is is, is you want to live a life. You it's love. satisfaction. It's yeah. control. It's fulfillment. It's uh, it's the ability to do what you want. It's the environment you live in. It's certainty. It's health. It's so many things. So I think you're a very interesting. It's more sophisticated, but I think that's really what you bring to them. Yeah. And I don't think they have anyone else that's really being that kind of an advocate. So uh, also, I don't think most people have a clue what their finish line is supposed to look like. And I made a comment in a discussion we had about an hour ago that 99% of the people in any business don't get to reach their goal because they don't have goals. They have very abstract hopes yeah. and dreams. Yeah. And you don't allow that. You don't allow someone to not have right, a Right, you have that accountability. You don't that, allow yeah. them to not know what the finish line is. You don't an allow them to not uh, know what their options are so they can choose either the best one or, or combination to get the best, the best yield for what yeah. is best for them. Not just money, but balance, happiness, you know, whatever it is. And you give them the ability to choose the future they want and the understanding of how to achieve it and the guidance to make it happen is pretty cool. 
Yeah. yeah, and I think the great thing, uh, something that I want to thank you guys for is that both of you, is that a lot of people don't think about, it's not even so much of what to do, it's a lot of the things you should not be doing. Yes, right? well stated. Well stated. Getting, getting clear on that. So first off, uh, Brian and Jay, thank you so You're much for being a mentoring welcome. coach of mine and also helping. And vice versa. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. And for helping so many great people out there that really deserve the very best life. Well, there you have it, everybody. I'm sure you took notes of wisdom <laughs> there. Be sure to apply that insight and get yourself some more wealth, freedom, and market domination. Boom. That was powerful and inspiring. And it was an honor to talk to these business legends who share the CEO Warrior mission. CEO Warrior is on a mission to change the lives of service business owners. One of the ways we do that is with our $30 million service business playbook. It's exactly what Rob and I use to turn around and grow our service business. If you'd like to get that playbook, to change your service business too, then you have one simple step to take action. Schedule a no cost breakthrough strategy call right now. You'll walk away from the call with greater clarity, confidence, and a path to make this your best year ever. You'll be charged up with a plan for growth. And if we're a fit, we'll invite you to go deeper with one of our many resources or programs. Go to CEOWarriorNextLevel.com. That's CEOWarriorNextLevel.com. Remember, you're either average or a warrior. Don't run an average service business or live an average life. Go be a warrior today. Boom.